decided to ask two people, uh, two BBF members, who arguably, I'd say, have found meaningful work, uh, just a couple of questions. And so we asked Laura and Sjord in this plenary to share some insights. I repeat, the BBF does not have experts. It's just people that have gone through experiences who can share some of the things that they do. So with that kind of spirit, what is your definition of meaningful work? Uh, Laura, what comes to mind when you think about meaningful work? What is it? What defines it as such? First, thanks for having me here. It's wonderful to be amongst this beautiful group of friends. Um, uh, and as you said, I'm not an expert. I can, I'm happy to share my experience that I am discovering as I, as I go and, and find a, a purpose for that. And the purpose is something that it's beyond myself as a person. It's something that it's in relations with others, whether it's other individuals, it's the planet. So it's, it's a movement of using my internal qualities in service of something beyond me. Um, a bit my my own definition of meaningful work and it's very personal again it's not a standard it's not a wikipedia definition that we're looking for it's just your personal view which is just beautifully mentioned Sjord, what about for you meaningful work big word big concept yeah or or not so big i like the fact that we don't give definition actually this is one of the things i've learned but to really dive into the concept and say you know what can i imagine thinking about meaningful work so first of all for me it, it's that to have a question in front of me that drives me forward to have a need that I respond to. So when I look also at the concept of work, I think it's interesting to ask the question, what is work, right? Is it is work to earn a living or is work to be creative, to create something, to produce something that has meaning for others and for myself? And I chose that the latter is for me more interesting than the first. <laughs> Um, so I often sacrifice my ability to earn a living <laughs> for doing something that is meaningful for me and others. So, I, you know, it's for me, it's actually to do something that is, has meaning to me and meaning to others. So then the concept of meaning is asked, like, what do I understand of meaning? I think there's, a, you know, it, there, a lot of a lot of thoughts come to the table, but actually to ask another person, is this meaningful for you and have a conversation about it? And to ask myself, is this actually meaningful to me? Is is part of that. So for me, meaning means learning, learning with others and learning with myself to see if it makes sense what we're doing. <laughs> and that makes work meaningful. And that could either be something small, cleaning a house, to contributing to the life of others. And, and you also mentioned the, the moment of pause and reflection. No? And I think that people that are part of this call are taking the time to time out. Hold on a second. What is meaning? What is really meaningful? And we're going to run through this call, but still, it's an opportunity to actually stop and think. And can can the... I add one thing, yeah. Daniel? Because I was, I was just uh, now a new th thought comes up. Uh, there's a new movie that has come out by Pixar. It's Soul, and I don't want to per se promote the concept of Soul with Soul.com. But what I found really interesting in that in that movie, I was watching it with my kids over Christmas. Is that you know obviously to to make a movie about soul is quite challenging you know how do you define it how do you talk about it how do you make it tangible and what really struck me is that at a certain part they spoke a lot about the spark that one has inside oneself but then towards the end of the movie and it's not a spoiler alert to me it started to become clear that it was not the spark that was the soul but the ability to respond to life to be wondered to be to be amazed by some beauty or some need. And I thought that was so powerful. Often when we think of meaningful work, we think of, oh, this is what I'm doing. But maybe even being a, someone who's working in a parking lot can have meaningful work by the way he's responding to people. And this yeah, is gradually starting to show anybody else. So the film is a lot about observing. So the person was just living for a specific aim and then starts to observe what's around them and this observation really changed the whole paradigm for them and talking about paradigm changes Laura success because people are aiming for success so what is success for you is not just in general definition but for you what would you say because I think meaningful work and being successful probably come hand in hand and there's a vision of what it is for us what we think other people see as success and how we measure things. But for you, Laura, success, what would success mean? How would you define success or being successful? Uh, maybe just to link to what Shur just said, success for me is really to be able to respond to this spark because we feel it, it's there. Uh, in a 
continuous way and to respond to life as well. So um, success, it's really, really honoring the, this movement of life that's within us and find ways to bring it into practice. So also when you talk about paradigm shifts, when talking about meaningful work or success, I came to realize that it's never a fixed point. It's not like a, a box that it's ticked, but it's more a practice. And it's a, a daily constant practice about asking myself or asking my, my team, my group, is this bringing life to what we are doing? Does this have meaning or how can I bring more meaning in what I'm doing maybe on a daily basis in a conversation I'm having about work, in a project I'm about to start when I'm having a conversation with a potential client or a collaborator. So, and success is this ability to bring back this meaning into these little daily activities because that the sum of all of these then results in bigger changes later on, but to really go away from this uh, view of like big shifts that everything has to be turned around from day to night, but more bring it as, more as a practice. So a, a practice of following the spark and responding to it. Beautifully says, Sjord, success. Are you successful, Sjord? What is success? Not so, not so much to add, actually. <laughs> I, it was interesting to, to realize when you were speaking, Laura, that I realized success is maybe the ability to have attention also. But it's very hard if you have work and you're constantly absorbed in the red maze of life to allow yourself that moment to have attention for something that is important or needed. So I think that's one thing. I think the other thing, I, what I was thinking when you asked the question also, Daniel, was the, the when I grow my ability to actually recognize progress, small things that are making a difference and it takes a keen eye to recognize it because it's not always the goal that I set out for at the beginning you know how often do we find ourselves somewhere else that we set out to go but to still recognize pro progress and then I, I thought what is the most important um, um, fruit of progress that I see and then I thought it's friendship so when I'm working and when I see my friendships my relationships are growing I think that is the definition of or the way how I can recognize success. So it's definitely not a traditional definition of success, but a beautiful one, which definitely makes it worthwhile going to work. Can I just add one concept, which is the concept of wholeness, like not to separate work and professional lives from who we are as individuals or our relationships, but being able to bring all these elements together. So success is where there is balance amongst all of this. And there is not this separations actually like the, how I show up in my relationship is how I show up with work is how I show up um, with my private life it's really this concept of success as a whole so I just wanted to add this because sometimes we forget it the last question for both of you maybe I can start with you Laura is uh, how did you get to your meaningful work I'm assuming your your work is it's never fully meaningful but it's it's good and how do you get there? Because all these people now are saying, you know, I want to go into a meaningful job. Great. So where are the steps? How do you actually find yourself in a, in a meaningful job? So my experience was get fired. <laughs> no, in the sense that, of course, my, well, my contract ended after two wonderful years uh, of uh, a job that I loved. And I was faced with the harsh reality of, OK, I need to, to find something new. Uh, and then I allowed myself to stay in these uh, questions of what's really valuable for me as contributions to others, not to shy away from this question. Um, I gave myself a lot of time for reflection and I constantly do it. So it's not that I've done it and not that I have a job that really fulfills me. I'm like, done. I take the time to reflect and be in these conversations over and over because that's how um, my practice of keep finding meaning stays alive. Uh, and I think another super important element was the element of accompaniment, which can take million different shapes, but I really reached out to a lot of people that I thought had a wonderful, meaningful job and asked about their experience. Um, and most, more, even more importantly, the people that were still in the journey of finding their meaning. So not just the ones that on paper had arrived, but the ones that were still in the quest and perhaps still are, um, I found that super important, even if they were in different fields than mine, um, not to make me feel alone. And I think sometimes what we miss is that when we are looking for a, a job or a meaningful job, we maybe get discouraged because 
because if you look around, it seems that nobody cares about it. They are all having meaningless jobs and they are fine with that. So already understanding that, well, it's not everybody. There are a lot of people actively searching for this uh, was super important for me for uh, keep staying on this track. Uh, and then small steps, like allow myself to do small incremental uh, steps and decision. Um, and then I think it was over a period of a few years that I found my, my path. Uh, and I'm still finding it. So it's it's a journey, I guess. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Laura and Sjord. Your path to, to uh, meaningful work and to success in a sense. How do you get to meaningful work? <laughs> How will you get to meaningful work? Uh, to let go of success, maybe. <laughs> um, I've, I've often been asked this question also with entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs who have startups and stuff like that. There's always one concept coming up in my mind, and that's long suffering. <laughs> it's not so attempt, you know, it doesn't sound so attractive. But actually, um, there's a lot of attraction actually to be able to withstand uncomfortable situations. If you know it's right, to have that capacity to deal with uncomfortable situations. I think, uh, you know, I've been called crazy many times, like more than I've been called brilliant. But we always make like unexpected moves because we think it's right. And uh, it's, it's just because we follow what we, what we really believe in and we are willing to deal with the consequences. Then the magic in the path is in the word we. And that is, I, I did not do this alone. I'm not alone in my journey. I have friendships with people I'm doing this with. So whenever I feel short, which is quite often, I rely on my friends to help me stand up and to continue or maybe take a pause, a breath of air, be a little bit forgiving to myself uh, or learn to recognize progress. That even the things where I don't see where I have made progress, maybe there has been, you know, the fact that I started again that day was progress. Right. Even if I think I failed, I tried. That's progress. And it's so hard to see that on your own sometimes. So I've been blessed with friends who are on the similar path and can help me to see that when I don't. And then through that path, my determination is growing. And now I don't even consider my work as work. It's not work. I don't have work. I don't have a job. There's no way this company of ours can go bankrupt. It's like impossible. So we challenged actually all the existing paradigms of what it means to have a company. Because even if it financially would go bankrupt, everybody in it is continuing, no question asked. And so I think that that's, that's really where we challenged through practice and hardship, what it means to work. You know, just to say like in this period of lockdown, we were in lockdown in the Netherlands again, both me and another colleagues have young children and everybody's taking over so many tasks so that we can do homeschooling. There's not, not even a question on performance or, delivery or whatsoever or being kind or people just saying oh it's so nice no it's just this is how you work together right and it's just interesting to see how that functions so i feel privileged and blessed to be in a position where i don't have a job anymore that's probably one of the aims that we can uh, suggest for everybody forget having a job just have a a meaningful <laughs> being and uh, and i'm hearing from you is not an easy step it's not just oh one two three you're in it's a continuous uh, path it's a nicer path if you walk it with other people. And this concept that really is keep reflecting and enjoying every moment. And even if it, if it seems a struggle, is going forward and it's going forward. You feel progress. And today, and, and today, Daniel, is a good day to ask because I have, exp you know, I've, I've seen some progress. So today I'm saying I'm going to have a job. Tomorrow <laughs> I might have some disadvantage. And if you would ask me, then I would say, don't do it. It's terrible. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jord. Thank you very much, Laura. I hope everybody kind of got a few insights from their very personal testimonial. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>